I was born here in Laurel, Mississippi, uh, at a place that's no longer open. It uh, was called the South Mississippi State Hospital, but most people called it the Charity Hospital. I was born there and I grew up in a community called the KC. Uh, it was a three-room shotgun house, uh, not a three-bedroom house, but a three-room house. We had a uh, we, we called it the front room, the middle room, and the kitchen. We did not have uh, hot and cold running water. We had uh, a faucet in the bathroom. We had a faucet in the kitchen. And uh, to get hot water, we had to uh, put it in a cast iron kettle and put it on the stove to heat the water, uh, to wash dishes, take a bath, whatever we needed hot water for. We, we got it from the stove. And uh, I still have the kettle at my house now because I never want to forget uh, having to use that kettle growing up. Uh, so we, uh, it was cold in the winter and hot in the summer in the house. You could see the, the sky through the roof. Uh, you could see the, the, the ground through the floor. And, uh, but it's what helped to shape me. It uh, gave me that uh, knowledge that in order to have something, you had to work for it. Uh, there was something when we were growing up called commodity. They, had, they gave away cheese and uh, powdered eggs and powdered milk, things like that. But my parents never would take commodity. They said it was for people that uh, didn't have anything. Even though we didn't have anything, they felt that uh, we didn't want to take something from somebody that really needed it. Uh, my daddy worked every day, my mother worked every day, but the thing about my uh, parents is that before we went to school every morning, my mother got up and fixed us breakfast. Uh, so when we walked to school, uh, we, when it was cold, we had something in our stomach to, to, to face the, the cold. And when we came home from school every day, she was there fixing something to eat after we got uh, from school. And she had been in working in people's houses all day while we were at school, but she got us ready for school and was there to greet us when we got uh, back. And her thing to us, was, my mother had, I think, like a third grade education. And she always instilled in us that we needed to do better than she did and she pushed education. She, she said we needed to get an education because she didn't want us to have to live the way that she did. And so uh, I got an education because my mother made sure of that. And uh, I went to, uh, graduated at Watkins High School here, went to JC, uh, Jones County Junior College. Then I went to Southern Miss and so I've been around the area uh, most of the time. I, I never moved out of the state. I've been here the whole time and I've seen progress in Laurel. I've seen setbacks in Laurel, but uh, it, it's been home uh, for uh, the time that I've been on this earth. It, it all kind of gelled together. It was when I was, uh, I got married and uh, we bought a house. And where we bought the house, the around us was boarded up houses, overgrown lots. It, it, it just looked a mess. And I would call the council person and she would give me a number to call some other department in the city. And I came, I, I would come and talk to the mayor at the time to tell him what I felt like some issues were in the city. and. It got to the point uh, that my daughter said that when she graduated high school, she was going to leave Laurel and she was never coming back. I knew then that that was my call, that if other young people were like my daughter and they decided I'm, I'm leaving here, I'm not going to stay, then you've got that brain drain that everybody leaves and there's nobody here to, to take up the mantle and to take up the leadership roles 
and to move the city forward. So I decided at that time that I was going to run for city council. I ran for city council and I did uh, four terms on the city council, did 16 years on the city council. And after those 16 years, I was to the point that you either run for mayor and be promoted or you go home because, you know, I, I felt like I had gotten to uh, as far as I could go as city councilman. And so I decided that I would run for mayor. And, and the time that I chose to run for mayor, it was an open seat. Uh, the mayor prior to me was retiring and I decided that I would uh, try to win the mayor's job. And I ran on 16 years of experience. And uh, my campaign slogan was uh, experience leadership for New Laurel. And I ran on that. Uh, I won. I'm uh, in my second term. The last, the last uh, election I ran unopposed. Uh, the election is coming up again next year, and I hope I can repeat that uh, feat by having no opponent again. Uh, several people have said they're going to run, so uh, that might be a possibility, but I'm still uh, hoping and praying that uh, we can go back in unopposed. I feel like I have uh, accomplished some things. Uh, one thing about Laurel is that the streets were in terrible shape. Previous administrations had chosen to pave over streets and leave the infrastructure underneath the streets uh, like they were. So after you pave a street, in a couple weeks you're digging into it because you got a water line that has broken or you got a sewer cave in. And so it takes a lot longer, it costs a lot more, but the, the sensible thing to do with streets is to fix the water and sewer lines underneath and then you've got a good street for 20, 25 years. And that's what this administration has chosen to do. We've also uh, tried to do uh, improvements on housing. So wherever we can find grants because uh, a lot of the houses in Laurel are owned by the people but they are not able to fix the houses the way they should be because of their income level. And so we, we search for grants. Uh, with the COVID going on right now, we're on hold, but we've got a, a grant right now where we're going to redo seven houses. Doesn't seem like a lot, but seven houses being rebuilt from the ground up to some people who are living there that has so many uh, problems with the house uh, it, it'll be a great addition to their lives, a great improvement to their quality of life. And uh, if we can just get to the point where we can have some, uh, some meetings and get some things done uh, while COVID is going on, uh, we also try to do a lot of things for quality of life, like recreation. And, you know, we're, we're working right now on a, a tennis court that the high school will be using as their home court we have just finished a uh, skate park uh, that we will be having a ribbon cutting on in a couple weeks. Uh, we're getting ready to build eight new ball fields at the Sportsplex. And uh, we, we try to give something for the community to be able to enjoy that doesn't cost them anything. They just go and they just enjoy the things that we uh, have available. And like other cities across the nation, we don't have enough money, but uh, right now we're doing pretty good financially. We're able to uh, have some good income coming in from our sales tax, uh, and that's because people believe in the city. They, uh, they invest in the city, they invest in businesses here, and uh, I think that uh, Laurel is moving in a uh, good direction right now. One thing I found, and, and I've, I've dealt with it my entire uh, career in politics, is that we don't need to separate communities. We need to be Laurel. There doesn't need to be a white Laurel and a black Laurel. And uh, right now we have a lot of Latinos that live in Laurel. We don't need to be a separate community. Uh, we still have people that uh, 
will complain to me about things and say, well, you don't do it like they do, you do it over in the white neighborhood. And my question is, where is the white neighborhood in Laurel now? There, where, where is the black neighborhood? Where is the white neighborhood? Where is the Latino neighborhood? Because everybody is all over the city. And in order for us to progress, I believe we have to work together. We have to uh, move away from, uh, you know, we have to accept the, the advancements that we have made and build on those because growing up here in Laurel, there have been some gigantic steps here. Uh, from this place right across the street here that was the Arabian Theater, uh, where the blacks sat in one section and the whites sat in another section. We've moved from there and we need to continue to build on things like that. And I think that as we begin to work together, the entire city of Laurel will rise together. Uh, and, and I believe that is one of the things that I would tell anybody, any young person that wants to uh, try to serve in politics because it, it, it definitely is a service. It, it's not somewhere that you make a lot of money. It's not something where uh, people praise you. Uh, there's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of uh, people uh, saying that you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right, but it needs to be about improving the city. And I believe with us working together that uh, that is something that is very much doable and, and the only way actually that we can progress. Uh, there's a lot of uh, activity going on downtown and they accuse us of uh, catering to the white people downtown. When in fact the actuality is uh, all the buildings that are for sale downtown are for sale to anybody. You know, you, you cannot uh, buy a building downtown or anywhere else with a 200 credit score. So you need to get some things together, make sure that you've got your, your business straight and uh, downtown is open to you just like it is to everybody else. And that's where we got to get to that. We all work together. We all make this a better place and, uh, and it can be done. And for people that, uh, young people that wanna make things better, then you know, just be willing to to go through the the, the criticism, to go through the, the hard work, because none of this stuff just happens overnight. It takes hard work, it takes dedication, and it takes uh, a uh, a cooperation between everybody. And uh, that would be my advice to young people looking to uh, get into the political field.